Um, it's a show of memorials, um, but we ask people to make memorials to uh, the current war in Iraq, which is maybe a rather um, problematic brief to give to an artist, but we thought by doing that we might be able to get people to think differently about uh, what can seem like an intractable situation. Um, and uh, we asked a lot of artists, not everyone agreed to be in it, but a lot of them did actually, a very encouraging number, and they came up with an incredibly wide variety of proposals. Um, sometimes having an obvious relationship to the sculptural form and uh, sometimes really departing from it. Um, the exhibition is on until the 27th of June. This is um, a piece by the British artist Keith Wilson, and I suppose it's one of the ones which is more obviously relating to the tradition of the sculptural memorial, um, except in his case, these are kind of covered in this really odd rubberized surface, which makes them seem more like things which should be in a leisure center. And I think um, a lot of artists in the show are kind of um, playing with various levels of irony when, it, when they address this notion of a memorial. Here's another one by the Dutch artist Mark Beil, um, which is, I think, uh, deliberately uh, cheesy, to use his expression. I was rather impressed by his command of colloquial English. Um, this, um, uh, this piece is a camera which is just displayed on a plinth, and the idea is that it contains images which are unexposed. Um, it's by an artist called Roman Ondak, uh, images which were taken in the war zone. Um, in an interestingly large number of artists chose to use photography as a kind of way in to this brief rather than sculpture. Um, this is a German artist, Klaus Weber. This was a really fun piece, actually. This is a unit for hatching butterflies. This kind of mirrored cube contains this kind of fretwork structure with all these butterfly pupae uh, hanging from it, and they hatch out. And that was, he was inspired to make it because he heard about this episode after 9-11, supposedly, when uh, it became illegal to import butterfly pupae into America because of the idea that they might be used to spread anthrax. <laughs> now, this piece um, is uh, a very complex piece which has actually been subject of a kind of a, a, a rather disruptive intervention by the British Library, but you'll have to come and see the show. There's a very long explanation on the wall, but it's one of the ones which uh, has really um, caused a bit more of a row. Um, and uh, it was by uh, an Iraqi artist, in fact. Um, this work is by an American artist, Nate Lohman, and there are all these kind of uh, petrol pumps from America in the, uh, in the, from the 50s and 60s. Um, Chris Evans, British artist, did this poster for a museum exhibition, a fictional exhibition of the relaunch exhibition for the Iraqi uh, Museum of Monuments. Uh, a number of artists made works which kind of address the fact that the cultural heritage of Iraq has been incredibly depleted uh, by the process of war and occupation and civil war. Um, Norwegian artist Matthias Fadelback with a, a text-based piece. Uh, as a, he always kind of plays with absurdity, and I, I think there's actually quite a high level of absurdity within the exhibition as a whole. The proposal, uh, or the brief to artists, in, is in itself absurd. And often this piece is, is a nice one. It's all these postcards which are of ruins, ruins which have been uh, created as a kind of indirect result of the conflicts in the region. And the artists wanted these kind of very undramatic images to be in free circulation, um, perhaps kind of complementing the more obviously kind of newsworthy images which we associate with the conflict. Um, this is by uh, Jalal. Um, so Khalil Rabah, an artist from Palestine, uh, and it's a map of the region. Um, and behind it, you see this rather nice wallpaper piece, which I will come back to, because there's a slide <laughs> of that. Uh, this was one of the works which was in most kind of potentially uh, dubious taste. Uh, it's rather complicated to explain, probably longer than I've got, but it's uh, modeled on a drug clinic in Switzerland. It's an actual, this is the actual uh, installation in the gallery. Uh, but the idea is rather than um, a safe space where like, users of illegal drugs could come and consume their drugs, which is what these spaces are uh, in Switzerland. Here they would uh, come and consume the ashes of the war dead. Um, it's a, a piece with real, um, uh, that really kind of returns you to the kind of horrific nature of conflict, um, which 
uh, is a very hard-hitting work. This is a, a performance piece uh, by an Israeli artist called Yale Davids, and uh, it's stated a number of times during the course of the show. Um, and it involves people uh, holding up these boards through which their lips are visible. Uh, and it's a, a kind of comment, it's kind of a human shield. Um, oh, this is an Iranian artist who I really like, who's very little known, I think, outside Iran. He's called Vahid Sharifian. And he made this piece called Bush Distance Family. And it's all these kind of found images from the internet of these kind of happy, smiling, um, middle-class Americans. Um, and none of them are of Bush's family, but it's, he kind of constructs this fiction using these images that these people are from Bush's circle. Um, uh, this is by Sam Durant, an American artist, and uh, you might recognize Downing Street, his proposal, and it's one of the ones which obviously will only ever exist on paper, um, is uh, for <laughs> piling wreckage up around um, the government sites in London and Washington and wreckage that's kind of taken from the war. Um, I actually have a little more time because through some error <laughs> I only had 18 slides. <laughs> so, um, 